undisturbed. What on earth have they done to him? Ugh. You guys all know how much I love the Disney character Hades, and if you don't, you must be new here. I never need an excuse to talk about Hades on my channel, or any other time for that matter. One thing that I do love about Disney is how it has always wanted to utilise their movie characters into mediums other than the movies they originated from. Might it be storybooks, video games, crossover episodes, mobile phone applications, live action stage show adaptations or even multiple live action versions. They don't confine their characters to just one thing, it allows their characters to develop beyond the boundaries of the stories of their movies. It also allows other actors to portray their interpretations of the character. Some good, some bad, and some just plain weird. Arguably, compared to pretty much every other Disney villain, he has the most character development. This is pretty impressive for a villain character. You could argue that maybe Maleficent also has a lot of eclecticity in how she has been portrayed, but Hades has the advantage of appearing in the Hercules TV series, which gave the character a lot more room to breathe and a lot more character development. He also just so happens to be my second favourite animated character of all time, the first being Jack Skellington. Also the fact that James Woods reprises the role in pretty much everything the character reappears in is a bonus. James Woods is very protective of this character and I don't blame him. Gotta love the consistency in voice acting. He is also the only villain to meet other Disney villains in media canon to his film of origin, having conspired with Jafar from Aladdin in the Hercules TV series. Hades appears in the Hercules movie, obviously. Hercules the video game, which is a lot harder than it really needs to be. Hades Challenge, which is a game I have never played, sadly. And of course, he is a reoccurring villain in the Kingdom Hearts video game series. I've only played the first game and I couldn't get past Ursula. But that was mainly because Ursula glitched out and she ended up having one eye staring at me while I was playing and the other eye was just fixed in place, so... That was really uncanny and just kind of put me off the game altogether. She's looking right at me so intentively and deeply that it feels like she's looking past me and staring into my soul. Hades also appears in the Disney House of Mouse series where his relationship with Maleficent is founded. I'm not usually one to ship characters together, but considering that this ship of Hades and Maleficent is official Disney canon is amazing to me. Haji Baba, who is I commanded you to wait at the castle. Away with you! She is Maleficent. Mistress of all evil. Don't save my seat, boys. Daddy's gone according. <laughs> Evening, dark and deadly. Name's Hades, Lord of the Underworld. How you doing? Nice face. Maybe you heard of me. <laughs> you sure can pick them, boss. Now, wait a second, Hades. Did you ever stop to think that, that folks might like you better if you tried to be nice? Nice isn't really my thing, okay? It clashes with my evil, you know? And is Miss Beautiful Short Fuse over there really gonna go for nice? I think not. You know, I appreciate a man with a fiery disposition. It brings out the dragon in me. Maleficent babe. I'm gonna show you a whole new underworld. Okay, this is best ship ever. It totally stole my line. It's just a shame that they end up divorced in Descendants 3. Word of warning, I know all the lawyers, all right? But what I really want to talk about is his live action depiction by Chayin da Jack Ch Ch Chenny Jackson. I'm going to call you Chenny from now on. Descendants, for those who are smart enough to avoid the Disney Channel movies, is a musical fantasy film trilogy originally developed for the Disney Channel back in 2015. It's a story about the teenage children of classic Disney villains, Maleficent, Queen Grimhild, otherwise known as the Evil Queen from Snow White, Jafar and Cruella de Vil. In Descendants, the villains and their children are imprisoned on an island where no evil magic can work and the descendants embark on a mission to free their parents from their captivity. There was also a CG animated spin-off show called Descendants Wicked World, which I haven't seen, but it's interesting because it's the first animated show to be based on a Disney Channel original movie. So it might be worth checking out, I don't know, maybe. Anyway, Descendants is an interesting concept to me, and I love when Disney takes multiple characters from different properties and puts them together in one world. It reminds me of House of Mouse in a way. 
Nowadays, you have countless brilliant fan-made shows having these villains together, but this idea of having the villains having kids and have them be the main characters of a franchise was an interesting step. What confuses me is that it's live action. I do think this concept would have worked far better as an animated series rather than a live action film series. It's admittedly a weak plot, but it's obvious that this series isn't about the plot, it's about the characters and the songs they perform. And it does feel like a Disney classic in a way. It has those kind of vibes, but it's also so simplistic and driven to a young teenage audience that there's not much here other than the characters to keep me hooked. I think what kept me glued to the first film anyway was how awkward Kristen Chenoweth's portrayal of Maleficent was in the first movie. You guys know how much I adore this woman. I mean, she's a four foot nine powerhouse. But this was so not Maleficent. This was Kristen Chenoweth in cosplay as Maleficent. I am sorry, I love this woman so much, but she was painfully miscast here and it's just bad. But it was fun and a memorable performance. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Did she just lick her st- uh -huh. It's a kids movie, kids movie, moving on. But what fascinates me more is what the film did with Hades when he made his debut in the third film. I was expecting him to be the main villain of the story, as was implied with the trailer. That he wants to break down the barrier and escape the lost island, which at the start is what seems to be where the story is going. Hades tries to break through the barrier, declaring, I'm a god, I don't belong here. But surprisingly, this seemed to be just a random opportunistic tantrum from him. That being said, his escape attempt triggered other events in the movie, and it's not clarified if that was his intention or not. I personally like to think it was, so as it seemed to allow him to prove a point about the double standards of how villains and protagonists are treated in the world. You know, a villain does something evil, they're locked away. But if a protagonist does something evil, they get a slap on the wrist. What was interesting to me was that it would have been so easy to have Hades be bitter and angry and be the one to manipulate the main characters, tricking them to set him free. Instead, Hades is in the background and is used as a plot device, only in maybe three scenes altogether in the movie. He still seems to be persuasive and uncaring, sarcastic and flamboyant, but he also seems more mysterious here and a lot more laid back. His design does make him look like an underground grunge punk band reject with a blue and white mohawk. He looks like a failed glam rock star, which when I saw the poster, I found it very off-putting. But when I finally saw Jackson's performance, I actually found myself enjoying it. Tambourine playing notwithstanding. So I guess I'm preaching to the choir here when I say that Hades from Greek mythology was not actually a villainous god, but was one of the more personable deities of Greek mythology. Usually in depictions of Hades he is shown to be more similar to the Christian concept of the devil. So he's usually shown to be an elemental based god with the power of fire and smoke. The Disney version shows Hades to have the power to control fire and smoke like an extension of his own body, turning his arms into smoke or the ability to extinguish fires altogether. So we haven't seen much of his powers in the live action depictions and yeah we don't really see it in Descendants 3 either other than how it's kind of enclosed inside this ember stone, which I don't really like the idea of. We don't really see him use this power until the very end of the movie, and we also don't see him turn red either, which was kind of disappointing. But the moment we do see the blue flame ignite was pretty cool, along with the blue and white mohawk on Jackson. But yeah, as I've already mentioned, what I did like the most was having Hades be the one to call out the double standard. If a villain does something wrong, they're imprisoned, but if a good guy does something evil, they are forgiven. Since when do heroes care about villains? When you guys try to destroy the world, it's an error in judgment. But when it's one of us, lock him up, throw him in the key. This version of Hades is not as malevolent as previous reiterations and is not as intimidating, but he is still a comedic and sleazy character. Hades approaches villainy in a very informal and comedic way. Because he relies more on schmoozing to get what he wants instead of his godly powers most of the time, it came as no surprise that he was still smoozing in Descendants 3. Having Hades as Mal's father isn't all that surprising since Hades and Maleficent were confirmed to be a couple in the House of Mouse series. It's nice that this ship is acknowledged here even if they are divorced. I like how the trilogy is about second chances, celebrating your differences and it has great messages about family and acceptance. 
It was admittedly pretty cool to see Hades be an absent father, delinquent character who turned to be a lovable but also still threatening rogue. It was also interesting to see him use his powers to bring someone back to life, a power we have only seen him use once or twice in the animated series, and as far as I know, not at all in other mediums. Okay, it's nothing like the animated version, but I don't think it's meant to be. This world is clearly a little bit fan -ficky, but it was a fun ride, if a little juvenile. Hades gave the film a little more mystery and 80s glam rock chaos, and yeah, I loved Jackson's portrayal. It's just a shame it's in Descendants 3. Just as with Hercules, Hades was this movie's saving grace. The movie itself is obviously not for me. It was a painful watch, but I appreciate it for trying something different. I'm Mad Munchkin, stay creative.